Today I'm going to share with you three cases of pulmonary embolus and their manifestations. This is a patient that comes in with pleuritic chest pain. Can you tell which side it's on? Well, we had trouble with it. It isn't an easy case. We can see here that the lungs, we want to compare them side to side and we look for any asymmetry of opacity. And we can see that there's an asymmetric opacity at the left base. And as it turns out, that's exactly where the patient's chest pain was located. If we look at the lateral projection, we really don't see very much here. There wasn't enough opacity to really create what we'd call the spine sign. We did a pulmonary embolus CT and we can see the scan was done with intravenous iodine. This is contrasting in the right ventricle and the right atrium. It's denser of higher attenuation than the contrast in the left atrium because we're doing this to optimize the visualization of the pulmonary arteries. We can see that there are filling defects. Here is a nice example of an embolus in a descending pulmonary artery as it compared to the other side. If we continue down, again we can see the pulmonary embolus. Here are normal vessels. We continue, we see it again. These are the soft tissue settings, so we're going to have difficulty seeing the consolidation in the left lung unless we look at the lung settings. And here we are. That same opacity that we saw on the chest x-ray is here visible as a patchy opacity in the left lower lobe. Here's the minor fissure. So this represents an infarction of the lung related to uh, pulmonary embolic disease with irritation of the pleura resulting in pleuritic chest pain. This is another patient who comes in with chest pain. And we see here the classic appearance of a saddle embolus. Again, done with intravenous contrast, we can see that there's a spaghetti-shaped filling defect which is saddling the bifurcation of the main pulmonary artery. Here's the main pulmonary artery, here's the right PA and the left PA. We see that there is clot extending into the left upper lobe, left lower lobe, and you can even see into segmental branches of the, of the other vessels of the pulmonary embolus CT. So this is an example of a saddle embolus. Finally, I'm going to show you a case where this patient comes in with marked pulmonary embolic disease. Notice that this patient doesn't really have a saddle embolus, but he has extensive pulmonary embolic disease anyway. You can see that there are emboli on the right, there are filling defects, emboli on the left. As we come on down, we see again the descending pulmonary artery on the left, on the right. So this patient has marked pulmonary embolic disease. When we see severe pulmonary embolic disease, one of the things we want to look for is evidence of acute core pulmonale or right ventricular strain. The caliber of the right ventricle should be less than that of the left ventricle. And here we can see an axial section through the heart this is the interventricular septum. Here is the cavity of the left ventricle. It should be greater than the cavity of the right ventricle. And here is the right ventricle. So the right ventricle is massively dilated, indicating that there is acute, severe, increased pulmonary pressures that are great enough to almost begin to match those of systemic pressures. So this patient has acute corpulinale and unfortunately expired shortly hereafter.